Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I edit this portrait in Lightroom. I also want to show you something that most people totally ignore, but it could really make a huge difference in the way that you edit your photos. Let's get started. So here's the before image and here's the after, and I'll take you through my workflow in the order that I did things to process this portrait. New Layer members can also download this raw image in the project files at newlayer.com. So if you've never used profiles in Lightroom, I highly recommend giving them a try. You'll find the profiles under the basic panel over here, and you can either click this drop down to view your favorites, or click this icon to open the profile browser. Profiles basically tell Lightroom how to interpret your raw photo data. So you'll see Adobe profiles, camera matching profiles, and then if you scroll down, you'll see some of the creative profiles, which are more like Lightroom presets. One thing to keep in mind is that the camera matching profiles actually change depending on what camera you use to take your pictures. The camera matching profiles actually try to simulate the different presets from different manufacturers that are actually on the cameras themselves. So they're called different things on different brands, like Sony calls them creative style, Canon calls them picture styles, and so forth. It can get kind of confusing since Sony also has something called picture profiles for video, but if you want me to make a more in-depth video explaining exactly what Lightroom profiles are and how they differ from Lightroom presets, let me know in the comments. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to go to my before image. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the camera portrait profile just so you can see how different it is from the default, which is Adobe Color, which, by the way, is almost never the best profile to start with, but most people never even give it a second look. So if I come over to my profiles and choose Adobe Portrait, you'll see that it kind of takes away some of the contrast, but the colors don't change much. Then if I go over and choose Camera Portrait, you can see that it has a different color tone completely, and it has even less contrast, which will help us keep some fidelity in the shadows. This photo was taken on a Sony A7R Mark III, and usually the Sony Camera Portrait Profile looks too green for me, but I wanted to show you how I would process this image using that particular profile. So the first thing that I want to do is warm this up just a bit, so I'm going to increase the temperature from 4350 to about 4500. And then I'm going to work on maximizing the dynamic range. So I'm going to decrease the highlights to about negative 25 and increase the shadows to about 65. And then I'm going to reintroduce some of that contrast. So I'm going to take the whites to about 40 and the blacks down to about negative 40. I think I'm also going to decrease the exposure a bit because I know I'm going to brighten up the face later. So I'm going to take that down just a tiny bit, maybe negative 0.1 or so. Next, I'm going to come down and sometimes when I want to smooth the skin quickly without having to do a lot of work, I'll decrease the texture. So I'm going to take that to about negative 20. And then I'll reintroduce contrast by increasing the clarity to about 50. Next, I'll bring the dehaze up to about 10 and that'll just bring back some of the richness in the blacks. I kind of want to give this a subdued color palette, so I'm going to come down to the saturation and decrease that to about negative 25. So I want to bring attention to the face, so I'm going to come up here and choose a radial filter. And I'm going to create it right over the face. And I'm going to set the exposure on that to about a third of a stop. Next, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to choose my brush tool. And I want to brighten the eyes just a bit, so I'm going to paint just on the eyes. And again, I'll set the exposure to about 0.3 and close that and zoom back out. Now if I want to come in and smooth the skin a little bit more, again, I'm going to choose my brush tool and I'm going to zoom in. And I'll use the right bracket key to increase the size of my brush. And I'll set the exposure way up so I can see easily where I'm painting. And I'm just going to paint all of the skin. So once I have all the skin selected, I'm going to set the exposure back to zero, and I'm going to take the texture down to about negative 65. So that's kind of my quick trick to smooth skin and make it look really nice without a lot of time. Next I'm going to bring more attention to the subject, so I'm going to come down into the effects panel, and I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette. So I'll take the amount down to about negative 15 or so, and set the midpoint to about 55. And then I want to shift the colors a little bit, so I'm going to come to the calibration panel and I'll shift the green primary hue over to the right just a little bit, maybe five or so. And then I'll come down to the blue primary hue slider and take that to the left and that'll kind of add a pink touch to it. So I'll set that to about negative 25. 
Lastly, I'm gonna come into my tone curve and I'm gonna give this a little bit of an S curve. So I'm gonna take the bottom left and bring that up just a little bit to about 1%. And then I'll take the top right down to about 92.5%. And then I'm gonna add a point here and a point here. And for the top right point, I want that to be about 75 and then 72.5%, which you can see in the top left corner of the tone curve. And then on the lower left, I want that to be about 25% and then 23.5%. And that's close enough. So that's it for this image. Again, you can see the before and the after. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you don't miss our next video. All of our content is created directly from user feedback, so leave a comment and let me know what you want to learn next. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.